we kick things off by going to nearby Metairie, Louisiana, where I visited the set of Queen Sugar for a sit down with creator and director Ava DuVernay. What up? Hey. How are you? Welcome. All good. Glad to be here. Welcome to uh, the set of Queen yes, Sugar. Yes, on the set, uh, not far outside of uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's interesting. I was having a conversation uh, with somebody, and they said, I don't know. He said, the, said, the show moves too slow. And I said, I clear, you clearly don't understand pacing, and if you actually have been to that part of the country, that's how it is. Mm. And it's interesting, as I've watched the first season, even the second season, how pacing plays it. Pacing is sort of its own character, if you will, mm -hmm. on the show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's not for everybody, uh, but it's for a lot of people because our ratings are spectacular. So um, I think folks are falling into the rhythm of the show, uh, which is very deliberate. I want you to look at the details. I want you to take time with these people. When you walk into your house at home, everything's not moving as fast as it does on television. So what we're trying to do is slow it down and allow you to immerse yourself in the reality of the lives of these characters. And so uh, it was a very uh, uh, um, pointed decision, something that we talked about when we first launched. And I wondered at that time, would people embrace it, especially black folk, where we don't see a lot of those representations on television, where we're allowed to take our time to live our life. Mm -hmm. And, um, but you know, the ratings show differently and the response that we get uh, shows us that people are into it. And, and what is it about sound that is so unique in terms of how you use it? How silence, wind, I mean, all, it's interesting watching it. As I watch it, I'm going, that's deliberate. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times it's just, it's just, it's just real quick. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there, there are moments where you allow silence to actually speak. Sure, yeah. I mean, I mean, silence is one of the most powerful languages we can use as filmmakers. And we really go about creating Queen Sugar as if it is a film. I mean, when I created the show, and with each episode, we are looking to bring in cinematic principles. You know, black people deserve to see themselves rendered on television using pristine cinematic principles. That it means the best lighting, the best sound design, uh, the best color grade, all the things that people shouldn't think about when they're watching the story. But just know that that goes into the mix when we're putting this together. That you're looking at something that's been made and crafted in the same way that I craft my films for television. And so that's done with you know some of the, the best shows on television, um, but those shows don't center black life. Mm -hmm. And so I felt like uh, we deserve to see ourselves that way. And so that's uh, you know silence and the colors and the framing. And you know I, I, one of my favorite compliments that I see on Twitter is, this looks good. <laughs> they look good. People don't really, right, you know. Right. Some people say the cinematography. Some people say, ooh, it looks like a picture. Uh, I saw a tweet the other day saying you could watch it with the sound off and still enjoy yourself. I mean, these are the things that make me say, oh, people are noticing the extra work we put in to make it look good. Uh, I was, uh, was at ABFF, American Black Film Festival, mm -hmm. and I uh, was chatting with Dondre uh, and his wife, Sally Richardson Whitfield, and we were talking about her directing uh, one of the shows. and. And so, so it, w it was very interesting in terms of talking with her, just that whole process in terms of how you select the folks who work on this show, as opposed to the, um, the fast food sort of get in, get out sort of process, mm -hmm. being very particular about who you want. Absolutely. I mean, all of the crew is handpicked. Um, uh, you know, Paul Garns is my longtime uh, producing partner, worked with me on Selma in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and, you know, the woman who basically kind of runs the set is, is, is a black woman, very rare. We have all women editors, we have all women directors, we have a black woman post supervisor, super, super rare, a uh, black woman composer. Uh, a woman uh, 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 music supervisor, uh, a black woman DP, you don't rarely see it. Latino, so, basically, so basically you're saying... A Latino uh, man as a DP? I mean, our, our work here is really to say, you know, there are other voices that can make beautiful things beyond what the industry centers. But what you're also saying, um, they're not hard to find. They're, well, because, because what happens yeah. in any conversation, whether it's... But it's television, but they or are. movies, or media. But well, no, when people just actually, oh my God, and I'm going, well, 
But if you actually open your eyes... You have to look a little bit because they've not been given the opportunity. Right. But if it's important to you to bring in other voices, they are there. And they They're exist. just not going to be... Of course. They, they absolutely exist. Uh, and so we know they exist, whether it's A Wrinkle in Time or whether it's uh, uh, Queen Sugar or whether it's the 13th. You know, I can't, I can't work in a space where I'm the only one. Uh, and so often our, our show creators, our directors have been asked to kind of work in a vacuum mm -hmm. to create something authentic. Uh, and everyone around them is, uh, is not able to share in the authenticity of the creation, right? And so, uh, so, yeah, we try to make sure that we empower lots of different voices and I think it comes out in the wash. It looks good. Earlier you talked about when you are looking on social media and you see these content, I mean, you see these comments. Um, I was sharing with one of my staffers said, I don't think other black people, I'm talking about people who even work on my show, others really understand what it feels like to get black love from people who watch. It feels good. There's um, a connection with our audience as people who are in the public eye or who create uh, that is so, I don't know, there's a spiritual connection to it. I think part of it is because of the absence. Mm -hmm. there, aren't, there, isn't enough, there isn't enough of these images. So when they see them and they see them done right, when they're getting information from you that means something, some opinion that they can relate to, talk about, uh, when they're seeing images that they can nod their head and talk back to the, you know what I mean? And be like, I know this, I know how this feels, or wow, this is beautiful, or, look at how we are. Um, uh, there's a, uh, I don't know, a gratitude, but a, gra a sense of grace right. that I feel. Um, and so yes, it's been really nice for me because I've only been kind of doing this for about eight years. So each year, I, I feel like m a little bit more people know me, like know me. So it would start where, like now, now and then when I go out, someone will stop me. Uh, and now it's almost every time mm -hmm. I go out, and it's lovely. It hasn't gotten to the point where it's you know. It's not Oprah level where you, you're like, it's too much, I can't even hear it. Um, but it's so just lovely because I like to stop and ask people, ask people more questions about it. And for mm -hmm. me these days, when I'll see someone coming up to me, black, white, woman, man, whatever it is, I'll try to figure out which project are they gonna talk about? <laughs> they're, gonna say, they're gonna say they love Selma? They're uh -huh. gonna say they saw 13? They're gonna say they, they watch Queen Sugar? They're gonna, what are they gonna say? They love Scandal, what are they gonna say? And so, and you know, about half the time I'm wrong. Because you can't peg people on oh, based no, on what they no. look like. I, I was, you know what I mean? I like, was, I, I had an older white woman walking up to me, and I was like, oh, she's going to say she loves Dr. King and so And she was like, Ralph Angel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you, I, I, was, I was in Dallas, um, and I'm going to speak at uh, Delta Sigma Theta at a luncheon, so I'm going there. And this bra walks by, and pants are sagging. Uh, he's got Timblins on, he got a grill, all that. That's so why I walk by, and I speak to everybody. Yep. Bro, how you doing? I walk by, and as I go by, he goes, TV one. Turn around, like, Roland Martin. Man, the stuff you drop on the show. <laughs> and I'm going, okay, I would never, I would yeah. never have thought yeah. he's watching the show. Yeah. And it was, and it was, I was kind of like, okay. That's great. When you think of the folks who are on this show, when you look at the actors, many of them have done other projects as well. It is interesting when I talk to them off air, and then when you look at their characters on there. And specifically, I talk about Omar Darcy. I always mess with Omar because <laughs> when he did when he did Ray Donovan, I literally every week on Twitter one of him kills. And so I said, dude, you have no idea. You need to thank Ava that you're on this show. I said, he's like, man, you were killing me every week. Yes. He said, so finally I have a character where I can actually live. Because yes. I, I mean, I was going after him. Yes. But, but it's amazing to see what he does and how people are relating to, and I'm going to purposely say, a non-traditional brother. So he is not the, the typical Hollywood chiseled, uh, curly hair, wavy hair, you know, mm. Mr. Suave, Debonair. And so, so all I see, man, if I can find me a Hollywood. Yeah. But it's just, and we know that brother. Yeah. That's an uncle, that's a cousin, yeah. that's a daddy. We know exactly who that yeah. cat is. Well, who he is is amplified because you can see him in relation to the woman that he loves. So a big part of Hollywood is Vi. I mean, we love Hollywood because of the way he treats Vi, right. period. And so uh, just to be able to show the 
complexities of their relationship and the purity of their relationship every week uh, is something that I think is really nourishing for us. This is a hat tip to all the men out there who love their women and who treat them right, and who treat them well. And there's a lot of them. And it's not them. an aberration. It's, it's a lot of them out there. And I, I just didn't feel like I was seeing that hardly enough on television. Mm -hmm. There's always a problem, right? How about just the, the brothers that are solid, that are just doing it right and doing it well? And so he is, and they, they're great together. You, okay, so you came to D.C., and I, it, I remember. So we were on this plane together, I think. And then, uh, was it one of the brothers wasn't there to pick you up? So we drove, drove you in the yes. town. We're in the car, we're just talking or whatever. Yes. And so every time I see you, you're sort of like the kid on Christmas who has this huge smile going, oh, I get to open a new gift. <laughs> it's not, okay, I gotta go ahead and do this thing. Right. It's that you really are having fun. I know, isn't that great? I How mean, you on Periscope. Like just, just on a location shoot, just like way too, I'm going, okay, it's Christmas again. Yeah, <laughs> it is. That's a nice observation. It feels that way. It feels that way. Because, you know, I didn't pick up a camera until I was 33 years old. And I had a job that I liked before, but um, it wasn't my calling. It wasn't what I was meant to do. And um, a good friend of mine named Oprah Winfrey always says that uh, the best way that you can honor God is to step into your calling. And that doesn't always necessarily mean, um, you know, having some kind of big career. It may be to, you know, be of service to someone else or to be present for your family. But when you know what you're meant to do and you have the opportunity to do it, uh, then every day's a gift and it's never work. So this doesn't feel like work to me. It feels like, look at what I get to do today. Mm -hmm. I mean, and yes, the days are long and they're crazy, but, um, but, and yeah, of course, some days it gets a lot and you were kind of like, oh, I'm overloaded today. But overall, when I write down my five things I'm grateful for every night, which I do, um, sometimes it's people coming up to me, that lady who came up and told me this in the store. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, being able to uh, call action today and how it feels when you say, it's a great feeling. You say action, people start to move and say words. You say, I, I, you say I, I, cut I have, and they stop. I have a, this I have, is great. I have a, right? Yeah, I have a different action on my show. Move your ass. That's just a different. <laughs> yes, a little different. <laughs> don't be Steve Harvey moving people. No, no, don't no. Be, don't be no, mean no, to people. No, but the brother I did it to, he busted out laughing when okay. I said it. Okay. Now, the others, now the other people on the show saying the same thing. Henry, move your ass. Right, and so, right. that, so now it's like, so now it's a run. It's, it's a thing. Oh, no, it's a thing, yes. It's a thing. <laughs> but yeah, it's good things and it's blessings all the time. So I'm enjoying it. The power of the word no. Because you turn stuff down, and a lot of people, ooh, why would you, you were tied to a project, and your deal was, if it's not right for me, it's not right for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I think we have to be discerning in what we do. I mean, the thing about directing is it takes so much time, right? An actor can come in, and they can, uh, they can work on something, let's say the shoot is a 40-day shoot, they work for maybe 50 days, a little bit of prep, and then the shoot. Mm -hmm. For us, for the, I've got to prep it, I've got to shoot it, and then I've got to edit it together, post. It becomes a long thing. So I can only really commit myself to something that I love because I'm going to be hanging around with this thing for a year. And then the days are not fun mm -hmm. because you're doing something that you, that you didn't really love. So I just try to find things that I really, really enjoy, like this new one, Wrinkle in Time. Um, there were some other films that I was looking at before, but they just didn't catch my heart. Like, uh, like Wrinkle did. And so, you know, I don't know if people are going to like Wrinkle, um, but I love it, right? And so that's the first, that's the first that's thing the first you got to focus on. Is, yeah. yeah, you got to love it. Put the love into every frame. Last question. I can't end this interview without asking you about a rep. Yeah. Be, be a rebel. Come on. I'm a, I'm a rebel. <laughs> I'm a you rebel. Win. You've been writing with Array when it was a firm, when it was, I remember the first, you said Sally Richardson's name. I remember me and her on your show for I Will Follow, talking about Array, the very first Array film. You've supported me through every, everything I've done, I pre on all your platforms, Absolutely. wherever you were. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. So how's it going? It's going well. We have our, 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 our 16th acquisition. So when I spoke with you, it was one film. 16 films that otherwise wouldn't have been distributed by women and people of color mm -hmm. that are now out in the world, screening in theaters and screens all over the place and on Netflix. 
Uh, so uh, no, it's been it's been beautiful to have that idea and to work in concert with so many uh, film lovers around the country mm -hmm. to keep it going. Uh, coming up on our on our tenth year. Weekdays on TV One. I will never lie to you. Oh my God. Roland Martin. He doesn't want to talk to us. He wants to ignore us. Uncensored. Hell no. no. That ain't no cut it, boo. Unapologetic. No, no, that, that is fundamentally false. You are wrong. Unfiltered. He wants an America where we all look alike. He ain't talking about black people. Unrelenting. You better go work out, because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin. Weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.